welcome to Generating Demand, real stories from the B2B trenches, where we tell you our secrets, like how to establish thought leadership, or rock your webinar registrations, and tips and tricks to drive sales-ready leads. Lean in, listen, and learn. We've got you covered. This podcast is brought to you by Virtual Intelligence Briefing. Hi, and welcome to Generating Demand, Stories from the B2B Trenches. Our guest today is EJ Montillo. He is a marketer of many, many years with a focus on community building. And I can say from a demand generation perspective, community building is very critical to not only your retention of your customers and your engagement and expansion of your customers, but also the upper funnel uh, community building and with your prospects as well. So EJ, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me today. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, it's a, that's, that's a varied question. My, uh, my recent experience is uh, being usually the tech guy. Uh, so, you know, in various organizations, I help uh, different organizations put different pieces of technology together in this digital transformation that we've been in for the last, you know, five, ten years or so. Um, but in the back end, my focus, my specialization, what I head towards and what my goal is as I'm building that tra digital transformation is uh, community. Uh, if you think about it, uh, pretty much everything that you touch, every tool that you use, every thing that you touch on the computer has a community behind it. And that's no different than you know a network or a friends group that you have anywhere else. So everything that I do is kind of focused and centered around how can we leverage those communities using the tools that we have available to us. Nice. Well, I know there's been a number of companies that have benefited from your community building. So the podcast is about t stories from the B2B trenches. So tell us a story, either what worked really well or something that is a don't do this story because these are the consequences that happened. Um, there's a lot around community building that you could focus on, the technology, the actual engagement of the community, the gamification, there's so much there. Um, but we'll save all that for additional future episodes. Today, why don't you tell us one story? Well, I'm gonna tell you a story about something that I learned through the practice of community building. Awesome. Um, as uh, in, a, in a previous company that I worked for, uh, we had a whole new marketing campaign that we had to get upended very quickly um, and with very little resources to us in terms of a team. It was basically me and one other person putting together Google ads and webinars and all kinds of cool things. Uh, and as I go uh, through all of these things, of course, I have a focus on community building. So I say to myself, you know what? Instead of just running Google ads, Reddit, this cool platform that I know you, that I use all the time, they're starting to roll out ads as well. Maybe this would be a really great opportunity for us to leverage that community and grow some followers on that platform and get some brand identity on there. Uh, Reddit is a really, really great place that has a ton of technology geniuses and just lots of great conversation on there. So me being the naive person that I am said, let's just take all of our ads that we have made for Google ads and let's put those up on Reddit. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's not a great idea. And, and I will explain. Plan. Tell us why. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was terrible. I, okay, so not only did I put up these ads, I put up these ads and I left the comments on for all of the ads. Oh. And so I was thinking to myself, here we are, you know, we're going to, we're going to put up the ads and I will be able to talk to the Reddit community in real time as they see our ads. And I did. Um, what I found out is that everybody that comments on Reddit ads has no interest in Reddit ads whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, they probably don't have any interest in ads, period, but uh, it, was, it, was, it was an enlightening experience. I received so much hatred from oh. many it – was, it was weird. It was not like – it was not anything that was founded in reality whatsoever. It was just weird people coming in and saying really weird things. 
Um, kind of like the communities that you hear about on YouTube comments or in gaming, yes. where yes. it takes locker room banter to a whole new level with the, uh, they say everyone's a lot braver behind a keyboard than they yes. are in person. Is that is that what you experienced? A hundred percent. That is exactly what I experienced. Uh, I think people just, you know, use it as a sounding board, kind of like a, like a, like a nouveau graffiti wall um, mm -hmm. <laughs> where they could say wherever, whatever they wanted. Um, but it was interesting to me though, as time went, when, it, when we first put out the ads, uh, we, it was, it was an influx of people just spamming our, our ads with random things. As time went on, I would respond to all of these comments and I would either, you know, ban them from putting more comments on the ad or, but I always put something there that said, hi, you know, I'm from data core. If you have questions, let me know something like that. Um, just being genial. And as I did that more and more, the spam lessened. We were still paying for our ads. We were still, you know, it was still getting the same amount of viewership and clicks even. Um, but it was, it was the spam had died out a little bit. So what, what happened there, you know, is the question. Mm -hmm. We were getting the same amount of click through, which was pretty good. I mean, you know, in, in comparison to like a Google ads or uh, a LinkedIn ad, was it as valuable? Probably not. But did we maybe get a couple of interested eyes that we didn't have before? I would say yes. Um, but that's immaterial. What's material here is the actual comments and why they went down in terms of spam. And I think it's because uh, people saw that there was a real live person on the other side mm -hmm. that was responding to every single one of these comments and said, maybe I don't need to put that there. Mm -hmm. I think this is an opportunity most organizations waste. Yeah. Have you heard of the broken window theory or no, I haven't. broken window I don't know what it, what you would call it, but the the genesis is that in neighborhoods where broken windows go left, standing as broken windows, um, the community members realize that no one's watching, no one's paying attention, um, and the overall engagement in the community, crime goes up, um, mm -hmm. engagement and neighborly behavior goes down. Um, but when broken windows are fixed, it's a physical signal to the community and the community members that people care, people are investing, people are, are there, and crime goes down and community behavior goes up. Um, it sounds like a very similar situation with you commenting on these ads. You are letting everyone in that community know that you are a real person and you are watching and you are engaged. That's absolutely um, correct. So that is a really, really good story. There's a couple things that I want to call out here. One is even going to Reddit to begin with, you knew your targeted persona that you were going after. Mm -hmm. And you knew that a lot of these people are hanging out in Reddit in in yeah. strong, you know, strong representation there. So, um, you know, you wouldn't have gone to a cooking, <laughs> a cooking <laughs> community, right? Because that's not your persona per se. So yeah. you did it. It was a really uh, finely tuned, targeted marketing exercise into a community that previously existed that represented the personas that you were trying to target. Um, so in that is a total win, right? Right. Um, but the other thing that we might want to talk about is the brand equity that may or may not have come from this exercise, right? Generally speaking, <laughs> brands want positive representation of course, yeah. and association, um, not necessarily negative. but what would you say that the, you know, even if a small exercise and short-lived exercise, what would you say that this exercise did for the brand equity of that company? I would, at I least would in say, that community, not overall. I would say, well, okay. The, the thing about Reddit ads is that it, it posts to multiple communities and there were a few that I highly targeted and, and ensured that our ads were, were posting on there. But mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, some of the lower quality ones get in there too. Mm -hmm. I would say, in, in the short term, it's a, it's a double hand, double edged sword because uh, on one hand, the, our small uh, it, our small little test set, what I would say equ equity terms, it stay, it was about the same. Yeah. We, it, if we had done it, if we hadn't done it, the, I, I would say there was relatively little impact to our overall brand image. Yeah. But, but I would say, if we had if we had continued, 
if we had continued to engage these communities in in other facets and other ways and on top of ads uh, for instance if we had instead promoted events or if we had just you know prom talked to the, spoken to them in uh, a way that engaged them more not just pot put up ads generic ads then yeah I, I would have said that that would have been a successful experiment mm -hmm. if only because they see that there's somebody out there who gives a crap about what their problems are. Yeah, so let me ask you, the ads that you ran, were they just generic branding ads that drove to the home page? And well, they had a, it had a specific landing page, but yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, that is really good to know. I, you know, as marketers, we're always talking about experimentation and how important experimentation is. And I think um, a lot can be learned from experiments, even if the quote unquote success metrics are not hit, right? Um, this is a great story of actually some fantastic learnings, even <laughs> if the success metrics weren't necessarily hit, right? My favorite think. thing, my favorite thing is in, in Wolf of Wall Street, one of my favorite movies, I'm sure everybody loves it now. Um, Wolf of Wall Street is, it, he, he says, Jordan Belfort says, uh, don't, don't judge me by my, by my winning short, judge me by my failures because I have so few. And I think in this in this biz, you can't you 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 have to fail. You have to fail a lot, and you have to you have to be cognizant of that failure and learn from it. And I think you know I want you to judge me by my failures mm -hmm. because even though I have failed like that, I will never fail like that again. And mm -hmm. on top of that, I'm able to teach somebody because of it. Absolutely. So that's a great segue to the next part of this podcast, which is. You know, one of the things that I've learned as a marketer is the more value that you can add to the community with no strings attached, the better your credibility, the better your reputation, the, you know, sharing is caring, um, it's inclusive, you know, all those good things about building community. So what resources or, you know, it could be a white paper or a spreadsheet or a podcast or a book or a website, you know, what resources do you have for and you can't be associated with it you i'm not no, no way related to it just no way no strings can I, attached can i give you two is can i give you two one, yes. one short one one longer one okay yes all right so the first one is a book um and it, it, I, I feel like half of marketers that are going to listen to this are going to say ew seth godin's <laughs> tribes um, oh yeah that's a great tribe. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that explains the whole thing for you. Um, so if you're new to community building, read that book. That's great. There's a, and then because you know I'm focused on communities, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest a community. Um, okay. There's a Slack community called Community Managers. Nice. Um, that is built for community managers. Uh, and it, it's it's just a really great place to understand the different tools that are out there to build advocacy um, and the different strategies and you know that you use the leverage those tools for. That's awesome. Very yeah. good, EJ. Thank you so much for being a part of our podcast today and sharing your story from the B2B well, thank trenches. You. Thanks for having me. I'm, I look forward to being in the B2B trenches again. Yes. <laughs> If you have any questions, want to suggest topics, or have ideas for guest speakers, drop us a line at podcast at virtualintelligencebriefing.com. To learn more of our demand generation secrets, visit vibriefing.news or grab the link in our show notes.